Welcome to this episode of the Cybersecurity Incident Response Playbook. I am Justin Tolman of Xtero, and in this video series, we are breaking down each phase of the playbook. It's an eight part series. We are on episode seven, and what we're going to be talking about in episode seven is coordination. Take a look at the screen. Notice we've been releasing an episode once a week and we have one more to go. If you haven't seen the other episodes, go ahead and check those out on the channel. Make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss an update to a new episode. All right, let's jump into coordination and talk about why it is important and how coordination fits in with the incident response playbook. So this episode really applies to federal civilian executive branch agencies. Remember your department of the rest of this playbook and what we've talked about can really be applied to any agency, company, corporation, et cetera, because it's just good practice and good frameworks for how to respond to a breach. This section of the playbook really applies to your federal civilian executive branch or FCEB agencies because it is focused on coordinating with CISA directly to make sure that the agency has the most support possible for success, as well as CISA learning about the incident and able to assist others in the future. The way that CISA does it is they create this diagram and they put a little number here and we're gonna talk about what happens at that spot. So notice here with the Clarion incident, we have a number one. And at this point, we are going to inform and update CISA within one hour that a breach has occurred, that an incident has been determined to in fact be in play. Now it is important to remember that you need to continue to update CISA as things progress, as you determine more information and move through the playbook, CISA needs to be in constant communication with you at the agency. Next, CISA will provide a risk rating for your incident and will also assign you a ticket number which will be used to track that incident with CISA for historical purposes, of course, so you can look it up and other agencies can reference it, that sort of thing. The purpose of this coordination phase is not only to help the agency stamp out the incident quicker, but also to learn from it so that all agencies are able to protect themselves better in the future. Notice there's a couple number threes here. So that means you're gonna do this process at these various stages, if not others. So what you wanna be doing is sharing your IOCs, your TTPs, and any associated data with those with CISA as you go through. Things like updated scope and timelines of what's happening, new indicators of compromise, adversary activity, etc. You wanna talk about the impact with CISA on your mission, on your network, what activities that need to be done haven't been done yet. This will help in the post-incident activities, of course, to isolate where you need to improve your response. And then of course, you're going to be updating CISA on the contain and eradication progress and timelines associated with that. CISA will be sharing cyber intelligence with you and with others to make sure you are as up to date and able to fight the incident as best as possible. Back to declaring an incident kind of phase, number five is if necessary, the agency needs to notify federal law enforcement that a breach has happened. This will be determined through coordination with CISA if this needs to happen. But just remember when we talked about this in the preparation phase and the de declaration of the incident back in earlier episodes, we mentioned that you need to have a policy and procedure in place to notify law enforcement. This is where it would happen is at the declare incident phase. At that point, CISA and or the FBI and any associated law enforcement will determine whether or not this incident needs an escalation to the Cyber Unified Coordination Group. A Cyber Unified Coordination Group is formed when a significant cyber incident affects critical infrastructure owners and operators identified by the Secretary of Homeland Security. This is typically done when the owner or operator of the agency typically owns or operates critical infrastructure for which a cyber incident could result in catastrophic regional or national effects on public health, 
safety, economic security, or national security. So again, the CISA and the FBI will help you to determine if that needs to happen. Post incident activities coordination, you're gonna provide a final incident report to CISA, okay? And then finally, CISA will validate your results and processes to assure that you're meeting the baseline standards of this playbook and other policies and procedures that CISA has dictated. And lastly, as part of the post-incident activities, the affected agency or agencies must implement the CISA required actions prior to closing the incident. We talked about it in number two back at declaring incident that you'll be given a ticket number before that number is closed out as complete. You have to have implemented the CISA recommended actions at the end of the incident. We talked about in earlier episodes how communication is big in the CISA incident response playbook. Again, this kind of lays out those channels of communication. CISA is providing a valuable resource for the FCEB agencies because they are coordinating between all the different agencies, learning from all the different agencies. And by doing that and interfacing with CISA, you can be more protected by learning from other things that are happening to the other FCEB agencies it doesn't have to happen to you for you to learn. This is a valuable resource for these agencies. And so make sure that you are as familiar as possible if you are one of these FCEB agencies to make sure that you are as efficient as possible when implementing all these different things and communicating and coordinating with CISA. Thanks for watching this week on coordination. Next week's episode, we're gonna turn a little bit. We've covered the whole playbook in this and now we wanna show how you can implement FTK and the CISA playbook together within your infrastructure to become the most effective in the implementation and responding as quickly as possible to minimize that risk. Make sure to subscribe so you are notified of the new episodes and we'll see you again next week.